<clears throat> now one rabbi wrote this. Listen to this, what he wrote. I thought this was incredible. This, you guys are going to really be able to relate to this. He said, wealth leads to power. Power leads to independence. Strip away wealth and power and independence is stripped away with it. The first step taken to enslave a free population is to first tax their wealth. This is not a modern concept, nor are modern governments the first to practice this. The practice of taxing a free population into outright slavery began long ago in ancient Egypt, and Pharaoh was the first tax man. It says, so they appointed them tax collectors to afflict them with their burdens in order to prevent Israel from growing stronger. Egypt placed over them tax collectors. Tax collectors, as we all know, are authorized by the ruling government to take other people's money. So apparently Egypt's first attack on the children of Israel was not against their person or their freedoms, but rather against their money. This is why the Egyptian government acted with guile to find subtle ways to equally enslave the children of Israel and to thus legally rob them of their possessions and to lower them to the indentured position of the rest of Egypt. Because they were doing well. I mean, here you have this real successful people next to this impoverished people. But a lot of times the rulers of the impoverished people aren't helping their impoverished people. They're just feeding themselves. And so here there's these two distinct groups here. It says, taxation in ancient Egypt was not only of the people's physical possessions, but also of their personal time and efforts. Not only did one have to hand over 30% or more of one's financial wealth, one would also have to surrender over 30% or so of your time during the year to physically work on government projects without any compensation for time or effort. Eventually, 30% or so expanded until it became an all-inclusive 100%. Thus, the people were left with no freedoms, no wealth, no hope, no future. Slavery to government, be it in ancient times or in modern times, always begins with subtle social manipulations and ends with total destitution. In ancient Egypt, national service began as a patriotic duty, but over time it degenerated into a comprehensive form of government enslavement. But the entire purpose of God's law is to set man free to be independent, self-sufficient, responsible, productive, righteous human beings. When we live by God's law, we rise up to become that which we were created to be. It says, charity begins at home, slavery begins with government. The Egyptians dealt subtly with the children of Israel. They tricked them into becoming slaves. In this way, the Egyptians avoided creating any animosity or opposition. The children of Israel were duped and blinded into becoming willing slaves. Little by little, they gave up their wealth and then their freedoms until they had nothing left and found themselves in the most desperate of situations. As it was there, so it is still today. Evil empires never come out and say, we are an evil empire. We want to enslave the population. On the contrary, they always proclaim messages of freedom. The messages of freedom presented by government are always subtle deceptions that lead to slavery. Governments, even ancient Egypt, used the play of class struggles to manipulate and misguide the public. One of the means is through population control. God said, be fruitful and multiply. Government says, we will have everyone help in paying to kill your children through abortion, so you stop multiplying. I mean, you can see the contrasts.